everybody, good morning. Welcome to day five of our daily creative challenge here for Photoshop on Adobe Live. What's up, Barry? Hello, Ava, Susan. Good to see everybody in the chat. The chat's kind of going wild right now. So good to see all of you and so happy that you all came back for week two. So if you're totally new to the daily creative challenge, this is a two week challenge. This is week two, uh, where we are learning Photoshop, basically. We are starting with basic beginner skills, but each challenge has the ability and um, the potential to be up leveled. So if you're a little more comfortable, you can totally take it to the next level. So we are sharing our work with each other on Discord before we post it onto our final portfolio on Behance. So there is support for you, however you need it, wherever you need it. What's up, Stony? And I will tell you a little bit about that right now. How's everybody's weekend? Was it eventful? Was it relaxing? Tell me all about it while I get this pulled up. Okay, so here's the landing page for the challenge. We'll just go over this really quick because it's week two. We should all be pretty familiar, but if we're not, it's okay. We're gonna go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop to get here and you can subscribe by clicking on this button, take the challenge. Scroll on down and you're gonna see that today we're working with effects and color. So it's another example of us kind of using all of the tools that we've learned last week and inserting kind of one or two new ones to make something even more um, layered and intricate. Very cool. What's up, Sean? Good to see you, friend. And Murray, hello from uh, Ontario. Very nice, hello, Murray. How you feeling? So we're gonna be making a solarized graphic using special effects and color adjustments. And if you don't know what solarization is, it's kind of hot with the kids these days, no pun intended, adding this almost like solar flare effect of bright neon colors to an image to make something a little bit trippy, a little bit almost roasted or deep fried looking. <laughs> so we are gonna be working on this trippy pineapple to make a paranoid pineapple shrub seltzer. If you weren't here last week, you wouldn't know, but I'll let you know right now that for our challenge, we are going with the theme of making drink labels. So by the end of the challenge, we're gonna have nine different drink labels. You can make a custom six pack to put on your portfolio and it's a nice product design or packaging design example that you can put in your portfolio. So this is what our can is gonna look like at the end. You can get this can mock-up super easy. Just go to that landing page that I just mentioned, click get started and that will take you to the files that I'm using. It will include some previews, stock previews of the pineapple and the scratchy texture. So you should be good to go. What's up, Rick? Good to see you too. And Frank, Frank, I saw on Discord, great segue to Discord, thank you, that you had posted a pixel sorting design for adjustment layers. So this is one of the techniques that we're gonna talk about today, adding this wind effect to create this pixel sorting, digital kind of glitchy feeling to our designs. You can see it down here. And I'll show you an easy way to do that. And Frank, if you have any extra tips or tricks on how you did your pixel sorting, please share it in the chat. If you wanna join us on Discord, you totally can. The link is bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S, and this is open 24 seven. So if you um, have a question or you wanna get some feedback for your work, you can post it here. You'll see everyone else's beautiful work. Nice job again, Frank, very cool. And you can even ask questions about your career or just chat with people, whatever you need to do. Oop, I'm not even showing my screen. Let me show you, then you'll know what I'm talking about. There you go. Okay, so join us on Discord. It's free, it's open all the time. It's a very merry place. So let's get started. We've only got about 20 minutes, so let's see if we can bang through this. When you open up your can mock-up, it's gonna look a little bit different than this. It's probably not gonna have this pineapple in there. It might look something more like this. So to get to our mock-up area, we're gonna open up this design group, double click, into this smart object that says, put your design here. If I make this bigger, you'll see that's what this layer is named. Put your design here. Double click on this thumbnail right here, and it will take you to a flat graphic where we can design in a flat way, and then when we save it, it will apply it in a 3D way to our can. Hey Lillian, how you doing? Frank says I share some tips on Discord. Oh cool, nice, you shared some for the pixel sorting. I know you're always sharing your process and posting amazing work as well. You saw your icon on Kathleen's Discord, heck yeah. 
All right, so let's get started. I'm just gonna turn off the preview. I have my background color changed to black because I know that's what the final background color is gonna be for me. So let's just change it to that. And you can do that easily by selecting it and over in your properties panel, choose your color here, black, there we go. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my pineapple. Now the stock version of this pineapple with the preview is included in the downloadable files. So go ahead and download that. I'm just gonna grab it from my libraries here because I have them nice and handy. You get a little bit of a sneak peek of different images that we might be using in future challenges. Ooh, you see a lot of the patterns that we used on Friday's challenge for clipping masks. Just gonna drag and drop. If you don't use libraries within Photoshop, the libraries panel, what are you doing? It's so handy and helpful. You can even license images straight from Adobe Stock or check this out actually, it's pretty cool. You can view your different options, maybe. You can sort options. <laughs> of course, oh, it's because I'm in transform mode. Hold on, let me commit this change, there we go. So you can see them in a list if that's more helpful. Grid, you can find a similar if you right click on an image. So maybe I want some more pineapples. It will search Adobe Stock for me and come up with a bunch of other ones that you can just drag and drop previews of. Isn't that cool? So if you don't like this pineapple, find a different fruit, please. Okie doke. Let's get out of here, go back to my layers. You'll see that I increased the size just using the transform tool or the move tool. And I'm just going to do about here. Now you'll notice that there are a bunch of other pineapples here and we only want the one that's cut in half. So I'm gonna use my object selection tool. This is new, I think got released at last max, 2020 max perhaps. Um, but if you have the most updated version of Photoshop, just go over to your quick selection tools, choose object selection draw a lasso around the object that you want to select. That was really fast. Wow, great job Photoshop. But if I zoom in, you'll see that it didn't do a perfect job. There's still some little areas in here that did not get selected. So let's refine that a little bit by going up to the top and select and mask. Why is pineapple called pineapple? Fairy, tell me, or is this a joke? I'm gonna guess it has something to do with the fact that it looks like a pine cone. Perhaps. Thanks, Tunk. Appreciate it. <laughs> I would like everyone to know that it was not I who commented on the kitties in the library. There are cats in the library. Sounds like a book, like a mystery novel. Who put the cats in the library? What's up, Don Anjay? Good to see you. All right, so getting distracted. We're gonna use the Refine Edge Brush Tool to just bump into these areas. I'm just clicking and painting and it's gonna do a great job of getting rid of those white areas for me. Isn't this kind of magical? This is great for hair, it's great for foliage and botanical images that have a lot of kind of intricate little pieces. It's great for architecture as well, like ironworks. Looks pretty good. We're gonna be editing this pineapple pretty heavily, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do like to increase the smoothness just a little bit maybe the contrast so that our outline is nice and smooth and it doesn't have any like varying values. <laughs> Fairy says, because it tastes and textures a bit like an apple, but it's shaped like a pine fruit, like a pine cone. <laughs> oh my gosh, Chad, you've unlocked something deep within us with that pin pineapple apple pin. Eek. All right, moving on, output to layer mask. Click okay. And we have an isolated pineapple. Very nice. I know for sure that we're not gonna need any of these other pineapples, so I'm just gonna go ahead and rasterize this image. We don't need any of the other, of the other pixels in here, so let's just get rid of them. Rasterize and apply our layer mask. You'll see how over here when I did that, it applied the layer mask to the image, thus getting rid of the layer mask and making it just one pineapple. Apply. Cool. We have our pineapple. Now what are we gonna do with it? Well, we're gonna duplicate it. Let's clone our pineapple. You can do that a couple different ways. You can grab the layer and go down to new layer icon. 
works just fine. I'm gonna turn off the visibility of one. We're gonna come back to that in a second. And then I'm gonna rotate my pineapple this way. <clears throat> Why are we gonna do that? Well, let me tell you. It's because we are gonna be applying a filter to this called wind, the wind filter. And if it's like this, then it's gonna look like the wind is pushing the pineapple to the right or the left. Whereas I wanna make it look like the pineapple is kind of dripping down. So let's rotate this. When I put the filter on, it's gonna make these lines go horizontal and then we can just rotate it back so it looks like it's dripping down. A Little bit of reverse engineering here. So let's go to filter, stylize, Oops, down at the bottom you see wind dot dot dot. When you see dot dot dot, you know that there are more options. It's gonna open up like an options menu for you. So click that and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see how this wind filter is affecting our pineapple. This is how you achieve that pixel sorting effect or one way to do it in Photoshop. And we get some nice glitchy textures. So there are a couple different options here. We could just make it a nice soft wind. We can blast it, which I'm gonna do, or you can stagger it, which makes the interior of the pineapple pixel sorted, but not really the exterior. So let's do blast. Zoom back out. You can experiment with left to right, right to left. And I'm gonna go with from the right because we want it to make it look like our pineapple is dripping down. <laughs> Cody, I'm learning way more about pineapples than I thought I would today. You're welcome. Who said Mondays were for nothing? Okay, I hit my commit button and it applied the filter. Now, if you view this and then you view this, you're like, wait, this one's way more blasted than the other one. All we have to do is apply our filter a couple more times. And something that's really helpful in the filters panel is that it saves your most recent filter in the settings that you chose, and you can just reapply it over and over again without changing anything. Boom. And I think I actually might have done it the wrong way. I thought I did. Let's undo. I needed to go from the left, not from the right. Undo, undo, undo. Lucky thing. This filter is really easy to switch from the left. There we go. All right, so let's apply our filter again and again. And check this out. Right over here on the right, it shows the hot key for this filter. So I could, whoops, whoops. I could just hit these three hot keys over there on the right and apply my filter again. So let's do that. It's Control, Command, F, just hitting buttons. It's working. Yes, thank you, Fairy. Control or Alt. Control. <laughs> Control, Command, or Alt, and F. If you're on a PC or Mac. Bryce, so this filter can only be applied in the horizontal direction. Yeah, so you need to rotate your image if you want it to be vertical, and then just rotate it back. Check this out. Boom. Now we have an interstellar intergalactic pineapple. Now we're gonna bring back our original pineapple and make sure that they are lined up. Move this over a tad. And there we go. Okay, so we want our uh, pixel sorting wind filter to be blended with the pineapple behind it. So let's change our blend mode. We can go through here and preview a bunch of them. I am going to choose Pin light. It shows some of the background texture and the foreground texture together, which is what we want. We really want it to look blended. Nice. And I'll just do it again. This is what the original looked like. This is our second layer. And there are two pineapple layers here. Now, on top of our second pineapple layer, let's apply an adjustment layer. This is where the color editing and the solarization comes in. Come down here to adjustment layers. And we're gonna apply a gradient, but not a normal gradient. If I just did a normal gradient, then it applies the same wash of color in the same way across the entire image. It doesn't take the image into account at all. So let's cancel that. We're gonna do a gradient map, which applies a gradient over the image specifically. So let's go to orange, 
choose this one and you'll see that the gradient is happening within the dark and the light pixels of the pineapple. We can do a couple more explorations. That's pretty cool. And if you are not seeing this gradient map option, you can always just double click on this gradient thumbnail and that will bring up your options as well. So I opened up the oranges filter and I chose this kind of sun kiss sunset one. Okay. So that looks not like our finished product. What do you think we're gonna do? We're gonna blend it on top of our pineapple. So let me play with the different blend modes. Ooh, that's cool. And see how they affect our dear pineapple. That's kind of interesting. It looks like it's almost gonna explode, like it's made of molten lava. Let's play with a couple others just to see what all of our options are here. We could use a clipping mask to clip our gradient map layer to our pineapples if we wanted to. That would probably be a good idea if we wanted our background color to be a specific color. Because for example, if I chose this one and I change our background color, it's not gonna be exactly the color that we want. So we would clip the gradient map to our pineapple so that we could have a nice pink background. But since the background's black, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go with this. Oops, wrong layer. Here we go. We're gonna go with pin light, maybe darker color. Kind of just like darken. That's pretty cool. What's up, Stuart? Good to see ya. <laughs> Wilson! <laughs> Alrighty, so we have our gradient map on top of our pixel sorted pineapple. It is looking nice and deep fried and cool. I dig it. Now let's pull back the pixel sorting just a little bit so that we get more of the original pineapple so that we can really see what we're looking at. So I have my pixel sorted layer selected. I'm gonna make a layer mask down here at the bottom on the bottom of the layers panel. Make a layer mask. Click. Michaela says, little question, we have to use the wind filter or can we create anything you want? You can create anything you want, Michaela. I highly recommend you just do <laughs> whatever you want. The prompt for today is special effects and color. So whatever that means to you, this does not have to be the special effect you use. You could use like the liquify tool if you want to. You could use a different effect. You could use some 3D extruding, whatever you wanna do. This is really just a guide, and if you wanna go outside the lines, please. I am all for that. Dorina says, I think Darken isn't being used so often. Yeah, this is a nice example of when it works well. All right, sorry, distracted. In our layers uh, layer mask, I'm gonna use my brush tool. Make sure black is selected and choose a slightly larger brush. And let's brush away some of our pixel sorting lines. I'm gonna decrease the hardness a little bit just so the edge isn't so stark. And maybe we will bring back some of these original pineapple lines. Maybe keep most of the pixel sorting on the right side of the leaves. Are these leaves? Is it a stem? Maybe bring back some of the pineapple texture in here. Oh, I like that. Don't wanna, don't wanna erase that. Okay, cool. And if I disable this layer mask, you'll see that the difference is pretty slight, but the details are super important. That's how you take a design to the next level. No problem, Michaela. Thank you, Cody, for posting the Discord link. Please join us there. I really wanna see your work. It's super easy for me to see it there instead of having to hunt through Behance. Okay, so we have our paranoid pineapple. How are we doing on time? We've got a couple minutes. I can show you really quickly how I made my smiley face. So to make the smiley face, I used tools that we have been using the last couple days. The first tool I used was the ellipse tool down here in our smart shapes. You might have the rectangle tool selected so you can just long press on this layer or menu choose ellipse tool, and we're gonna use this to make the mouth. You think the greenery, greenery is called a headdress? For some reason, I believe you. All right, and we're gonna draw out a perfect circle. I'm doing that by holding Option and Shift at the same time. We are gonna turn the fill to none, 
turn the stroke to white and let's increase the thickness of the stroke. This is going to be the bottom of the mouth. Looks pretty good. Okay, so there's a couple different ways we could cut this in half to get that smile. I'm just going to use a layer mask because that seems easiest. We will use black, increase the hardness all the way. I'm going to click, I'm going to hold shift, and I'm just going to draw a straight line across. A smile! <laughs> Super easy. We could use the pen tool or the curvature tool, but we're going to talk about those in a future challenge. So I'm going to save that for then. But if you're familiar with those tools, go ahead and use them. Okie doke. Now for the two eyes, what do you think I'm going to do? Yep. Two ellipses. Draw it out. Go to my properties here at the top. Fill it with white. Turn the stroke to none and move it on over. Now to duplicate a layer in Photoshop just on the canvas instead of the layers panel, suddenly smiley. <laughs> uh, it's really easy to do. Just hover over your shape, hold down option. When you do that, you'll see the little duplicate cursor up here. Holding down option, clicking and dragging. And now I have a smiley face. You could make a new layer, use white, Turn your smoothing all the way up to 100. And, oh, that's blue. That is not white. <laughs> you tricked me, Photoshop. There you go. And there you go. We have our paranoid pineapple. Suddenly smiley. I love that, Cody. It's so easy to make something happy. Okay, so let's hit save. Command S, or you could go up to file, save. Bop back over to our mock-up. There it is. We are all done. I know, Darina, isn't it? Very cute. And here's my original design that I did. I applied my kind of scratchy texture that I included in the starter file. So if you want to use that, you certainly can. You can just change the blend mode to multiply or overlay to have it lay on top of your image. And I think we're good to go. So I am going to put this onto Discord and let's see what y'all think about it. Yay, Bryce, I'm glad you liked it. This is, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, this is my favorite challenge of this series. I had, I think, the most fun creating it. And if you follow me on Instagram, you might've seen a little preview and I actually provided it as a phone background that you could download for free. So if you wanna follow me on Instagram, you should do that. I'm Kathleen Illustrated. Go find me over there. But for now, quick export as PNG. Let's go to my desktop. Let's say paranoid. Pineapple apple pen. There we go. Let's open up Discord one more time. <laughs> click this plus button down here and make sure that you are in the correct channel. So in feedback, click challenge. This is where you can get challenge feedback. Click the plus, click the plus button, button. And actually, I exported the wrong one. I want the full mock-up. So let's go back to Photoshop. Go to my mock-up. Just gonna take a quick little screenshot. That seems to be the easiest way. And let's do it again. Here we go. How do we feel about our pineapple? Smiley enough? <laughs> Instagram got the first shot of this. I feel like the third child. <laughs> That's why you just got to follow me on Instagram. They, I do post some previews of challenges and ask questions and polls and that kinds of thing. Everyone appreciate her favorite challenge. Thank you, Z or Rick. All right, so let me know. We've got one from Miku. Appreciate that. If you want to come back tomorrow, we're going to have another challenge. It's going to be day six. And I think it's going to be... An exciting one as always we are, we're kind of getting to the last part of this challenge series so things are going to start getting juicy and exciting maybe using some lesser known workflows or creating some things that aren't so beginner so make sure you come back tomorrow 9 a.m pacific 12 p.m eastern and stick around for more live streams right after me we've got a full day of adobe live so stick around learn some stuff and i will see you tomorrow i can't wait bye everybody